Charlie Ho, it's Ocean back with something a little bit different today. So I've decided to hop on the bandwagon of doing a trend that is probably out of date by now. Hey! And that trend, of course, is tier lists. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be ranking 100 games that I have played. So this is Ocean from the future. To tell you that I was originally going to do 100 games for this one video, but then I realised how much of a freaking dumbass idea that was. So what I've decided to do is I've split this video into parts and this is part one. So for each part I'm going to be doing 25 games. I did 25 games this episode, I'll be doing 25 games next episode and then in part three and part four. My idea is that I'm actually going to keep this tier list going to create a compendium, like the biggest tier list I could possibly do that's going to have hundreds of games on there and we'll see how they all rank against each other. So just to quickly go through the tier ratings that I have, the top one is Masterpiece. Mwah. The second one is, yeah, it's pretty damn good. The third tier is, yeah, it was okay. The fourth tier is, meh. And the fifth tier is, what the f***? So let's not waste any more time, let's get straight into this. The first game, Stardew Valley. Oof. Oof, what a game. What a game. Stardew Valley for me was one of those games that was almost like a sleeper hit. I gave it a try and I was like, yeah, sure, I guess I'll play it for a little bit, see what it's like. And boom, it absolutely blew my mind. The problem is... There is some things that I don't like about the game. One of the issues being that I'm not entirely keen on how long it takes to get villagers' hearts up. I also feel like after playing it for quite a while, the game starts to get a little bit repetitive and monotonous in some places. Like the walking speed becomes a lot slower if you're not playing on PC, of course. So I'm thinking I'm going to put that in pretty damn good because I do kind of see it as a masterpiece, but at the same time, the game on repeat playthroughs doesn't feel as fun, doesn't feel as interesting, and I, I don't know, there's, there's just something about that game that isn't quite a masterpiece, but it is a fantastic game, so I'll leave it in pretty damn good. The next game, oh god, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm just gonna straight up come out and say it. I'm gonna put it in okay. I know there's a lot of people out there that consider this game an absolute masterpiece or a fantastic game. I just don't feel that way. For me, the game was a very 50-50 kind of experience. Half of the game, I was like, hell yeah, oh, this is so good, this is so cool. The other half of the game, I am literally like, fucking, oh my god. <sighs> there was a lot of times in that game that I was just genuinely not having any fun. I was genuinely frustrated. I was genuinely feeling like the game was a bit of a disappointment. Also, I will say that Final Fantasy VII Remake was my first experience with the Final Fantasy VII game. I never played the original game. And I know that VII Remake is definitely tailored more towards the fans of the whole Final Fantasy VII amalgamation or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But I just, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as other people did. I thought that it was an okay game, but I just personally found that it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. I've had people telling me that it's a masterpiece and it's the best game ever made, and I massively disagree with that, to be honest. But hey, that's just me. You don't have to agree. Let me know where you might have put it in the comment section. The next game is a weird one. And that game is... Doki Doki Literature Club. Hell yes, baby. I freaking loved this game. But I am going to put it in pretty darn good, just because even though it is a really cool game, there is a lot of visual novel elements. Well, the whole game is a visual novel, but the first four or so hours of the game is just a straight up visual novel that's still pretty good, but kind of leaves the game falling a little bit flat when you see the events and all the stuff that happens after that first couple of hours. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it in pretty damn good because it was pretty damn good. Plus the soundtrack is Mwah. The next game, Death Stranding. This is a big one, folks. I have got to say, I've never seen a game divide people so much before. There's so much division of opinion on this game. Some people absolutely love it with their entire hearts and some people think it is the worst thing ever created. I, however, love this game oh my gosh it's so fucking good masterpiece masterpiece yeah i've never had such a relaxing and zen experience in a video game before this game was incredible the soundtrack is amazing the gameplay felt like something brand new that i'd never experienced before and i loved that and once all was said and done and the credits rolled i had that feeling of sadness that feeling of hollowness like i didn't know what to do with my life now that this game was over and i loved that so yeah, masterpiece. 
The next game is Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls specifically with all of its updates. I freaking loved this game. I'm not the biggest fan of games like Diablo. I've tried other games like this such as Path of Exile and Torchlight and for some reason they just never grabbed me like Diablo did. But Diablo 3 is goddamn fantastic. My only issue is that sometimes the game can get a little bit too grindy, a little bit too monotonous in places, so I'm going to put it in pretty darn good. Hell yeah! The next game's going to be a kind of weird one for me because I freaking love this game. It's kind of a spoiler within itself. But in the modern day, when we have open world games that have been absolutely amazing or really interest that have really interesting open worlds, I feel like this game doesn't quite match up to that anymore. That game is Fallout New Vegas. This is personally my favourite Fallout game. I absolutely adore this game. I actually have the collector's edition in my bedroom, which I will be showing off at some point during a future video where I'm going to be looking at all the like collectible stuff and cool like figurines and all the cool things that I have. So I'll keep your eyes peeled for that one. But yeah, I'm going to put this in pretty darn good because it is a fantastic game and I find myself coming back to play this game a lot. In fact, I do plan to come back to this game and make a video on it in the future. But like I said, I, I still feel like the open world in Fallout games is not very interesting and what, by that I mean I don't feel the need to explore every nook and cranny of the map, but it still is a fantastic game, so it goes in pretty darn good. The next game, the winner of my game of the year for 2020, oh, let's be really honest, if Death Stranding or Judgments came out in 2020, I would have given one of those games the game of the year instead. Ghost of Tsushima. This game is goddamn fantastic. The combat felt incredibly rewarding and had a had this sense of mastery to it that I thoroughly enjoyed. So I am going to put this... Ah, uh, I don't know. I really do love this game, but I don't consider it a masterpiece. That's the weird thing. I'm going to put it in pretty damn good. I'm not saying that there's anything that is, is bad about this game. I don't know what it is. There's just something that for me personally doesn't push it past that masterpiece threshold. I, I don't know. It's, it's, ah, these are difficult. <laughs> but yeah, it is a very high, pretty darn good. But for me, I don't know. When I see some, when I think of a game as a masterpiece, everything works in, like, everything just works in that game. Everything is incredible in that game. And I have a special place in my heart for that particular game. Whereas Ghost of Tsushima isn't quite there for some reason. I just think it's an incredibly good game. So I'm going to put it in pretty darn good. Oh, this is going to be a weird one. The next game. Hailed as one of the best games of all time. People are still waiting on a sequel to this very day, although Half-Life Alex is kind of like a sequel, I guess. I kind of just spoiled it by saying Half-Life Alex. <laughs> the next game, Half-Life 2. And I'm going to put this immediately in pretty darn good. Because, I don't know, I've always just thought this game was a really good game, but I've never seen it as a masterpiece. I am going to go back and replay this game at some point and make a video on it, because I've not played this game in a while, but when I played it, I just thought it was a really good game. I didn't see it as anything more. But maybe that's because I played the game way after it came out, and not when it came out, because so, I know this game did a lot to revolutionise certain elements of game design. I just think it's pretty darn good. The next game, this one could potentially be a bit of a controversial one. And I might end up taking some L's from people in the comments section. <sighs> that game, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. I'm going to put this in pretty darn good. Only because of its story elements. The open world stuff wasn't very interesting, but I do like the fact that you can use some of the open world to to approach missions in any way that you want to. So you can come in from multiple directions and infiltrate bases in different ways. It's really cool. Or you can play the game the way I did, which is by using a silenced tranquilizer sniper rifle and basically just pick off enemies and then fulton them into the sky. The game for me feels like it's almost on the verge of being something like a masterpiece. But the story, god damn it, god damn it. The story unfortunately is what lets the game down as uh, it's unfinished or very much feels unfinished. So yeah, I'm going to put it in pretty damn good and I am fine with that. The next game, god diggity damn. I'm going to take y'all down to the goddamn gun toting wild wild west motherfucker. That game is none other than Red Dead Redemption. Hell yeah. I'm doing it right now. I'm putting it. 
in what the f I'm just kidding. I'm putting it in masterpiece. <laughs> I'm putting it in masterpiece. So my reason for that placement is I just absolutely love everything about this game. I do personally find that Rockstar controls, the controls for their games, can oftentimes be fucking awful because I am not a fan of delayed controls. It's a big peeve of mine in video games. But Red Dead Redemption wasn't too bad and I always found the gunplay in Red Dead Redemption to be some of the best that I've ever played. For a third person game that is. I know some people are going to disagree on that and that's fine, but I absolutely love Red Dead Redemption. I played the crap out of the story, I 100%ed the Undead Nightmare um, like extra additional thing that they did, and I played an absolute ton of the multiplayer. I had an absolute blast with that game back in the day. So it is a masterpiece. The next game, and I feel like this one might be a little bit of a controversial one as well, considering the fan base can never agree on what they like, and that game is Resident Evil freaking 7. And I'm just going to say, fucking awful game. I'm putting it in what the f pretty damn good. I'm putting it in pretty damn good because I actually really enjoyed Resident Evil 7. When I first saw the reveal trailer, um, it kind of just looked like a PT clone and I wasn't really a fan of that. And I was actually really sad and kind of disappointed by that. But then I played the demo for myself and I thought, actually this could be pretty good so i went ahead and i played the game and holy crap i freaking loved this game i thought it was fantastic but like i said with ghost of tsushima even though i really love this game something about it didn't quite make it past that threshold into masterpiece so i'm gonna put it in pretty damn good can't wait to resident evil 8 silent hill mother freaking trucking 2 <sighs> i hate that i have to do this game i really do i hate that i have to try and rank this because for its story elements and all the really cool things like all the creatures being part of James's psyche and all this really cool stuff, I want to put it in Masterpiece, I really do, but my issue with Silent Hill 2 is I find that some of the riddles and the puzzles in the game can be a little bit obnoxious sometimes and don't quite make sense and I often find myself getting lost and not knowing what to do, which is probably a me thing, I'm probably just a complete dumbass and for that reason I'm gonna put it in meh, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm putting it in pretty damn good. We're gonna swing on into the next game and we're gonna save the day in Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4. This game freaking slaps. I loved Marvel Spider-Man so goddamn much, it absolutely blew me away, and in my eyes, it is the best Spider-Man game ever made. I loved the combat, the, all the different suits that you could unlock were really cool, the story was its own thing and was really, really fun, and for all those reasons, I'm gonna put it in Masterpiece. So the next game, considered to be, by some, one of the greatest games ever made, and is also a game that is uh, probably the most ported game ever made, and that game, of course, is The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. I love this game. I think it's fantastic. I played it a bunch of times on console, played it a bunch of times on PC with a bunch of different mods, but yeah, I love this game. But at the same time, I don't consider it a masterpiece. This is, once again, another game that I feel like doesn't quite pass that threshold. So I am going to put it in what the fuck. Pretty damn good. A way out. So some people may disagree with me on this. I played this game with my partner over on my Kingfish Ocean channel and I had an absolute goddamn blast with this game. This game actually got my game of the year for whichever year it came out because I can't remember what year that was. This game said fuck you to the Oscars and that game was a way out. And I'm gonna put this in Masterpiece. My reason for that being that, like I said, I just had an absolute goddamn blast with this game. I got to play it with my partner, so there was some kind of bonding moments there. The gameplay never got old and constantly brought in new experiences that were just really fun. I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the characters. I really enjoyed the soundtrack. I thought it was fantastic. So it goes in Masterpiece. Now the next game, the next game, oof, oof. The next game, oof, oh, it's an absolute horrible game, one of the worst games ever made, and that game is Resident Evil 1 Remake, oh my god, I am kidding, this game is fantastic and I freaking love it, it is amazing, masterpiece. Now for the next game, we're going to travel through time, all the way back to the 9th of October 2002, and that game is Time Splitters 2. I loved the absolute crap out of this game when I was a kid, even though I was terrible at it. The campaign had a bunch of different levels that all were in different locations, which kept things feeling fresh, and that was awesome. The gunplay now is pretty, pretty dated, but I do hear that if you set up the game with mouse and keyboard, it suddenly breathes new life into the game, and that is awesome. So I am going to put Time Splitters 2 in pretty darn good. 
And the next game, which I felt like I'd talk about as well, is Time Splitters Future Perfect, the sequel to Time Splitters 2. I basically have all the same reasons I said for Time Splitters 2, but Time Splitters Future Perfect, it had a bit more of a connected story going on, which was really cool. And on top of that, it also had a map maker, which I spent so many hours in just to play through my own little missions, my own little maps, and that was awesome. But I'm also going to be putting that one in pretty damn good. Pretty Dying God has now expanded into the second tier. Wow. Now the next one is going to be a really weird one, because I'm actually going to be talking about a Nintendo DS game, and it's one that people might not think that I'd pick. It's The Herbs Sims in the Fucking City. Hell yes. I love this game, but I love this game. I will happily go back and play this game now. For those unaware, the Sims games on the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS are slightly different from the usual Sims games. The usual Sims games, you build houses and you have, you know, the little plumb bob and you control the characters with point and click mechanics. But the Sims busting out um, Sims 2 and Herb Sims in the City do not do that. They actually play completely differently. You control the character fully and you get a proper story where you meet all these wacky characters and you can do all these different like you can do all these cool mini games and different jobs like you get to be like a comedian it's actually quite a fun game and it actually blew me away like I, I will admit I'm not really that much of a Sims fan I don't know why it's just a franchise that I never really got into but I loved the herb Sims in the city for Game Boy Advance Nintendo DS for that reason I'm gonna put it in pretty damn good following on from Fallout New Vegas we're gonna be talking about Fallout 4 I'm gonna be putting it in pretty damn good but I am going to say I don't think it's anywhere near as good as Fallout New Vegas. This game was kind of a disappointment to me. But I do love the base building mechanics that they added to this game. I thought those were fantastic. And the fact that you can have mod support for console is amazing. It's breathed so much new life into the game for me personally. Though I do wish the building mechanic would work a little bit better. Because good god it is impossible to build anything in that damn game. So yeah I'm going to put it in pretty damn good. Now the next one is actually going to be a completely different kind of game. This is a game once again that I played with my partner and we replay this game quite often especially um considering the fact that they keep bringing out new content for free like new levels and stuff which is awesome and that game is human fall flat it's just a wacky silly fun little game and i love it so i'm gonna put it in pretty damn good so the next game some people may disagree with me on this but I actually quite enjoy walking simulators. They're the kind of game where I can just sit back, relax, experience a story and not have to worry about heavy gameplay, which is fantastic. And for me, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, the best of all of these games is what remains of Edith Finch. The gameplay is relaxing, but also stays fresh and has you doing these different mini games throughout the game, which keeps the game feeling fun. The story is brilliantly told, the soundtrack's fantastic, and I just think it's the whole package. So I'm putting what remains of Edith Finch in masterpiece. Now the next game some of you may not have heard of, but I checked out a wonderful little gem of a game known as Little Misfortune. This game is kind of like a spiritual sequel to the game Fran Bohr, and it's kind of a bizarre, sad, and just really kind of twisted game about a little girl who is basically just being a little girl doing little girl things, but there's a lot of really messed up stuff in there. It's kind of a bizarre game, but I loved it nonetheless, and for that reason, I'm putting it in pretty damn good. <sighs> now, the next one is going to be a really weird one for me, because it's a sequel to something that's already in this list. It's a sequel to a game that is in the masterpiece tier, but I don't think it's as good. And that game is Red Dead Redemption 2, which I'm putting in pretty damn good, because the story Oh my god, the story is phenomenal. It is absolutely fantastic. The soundtrack, also phenomenal, also fantastic. The gameplay... Uh, this is one of those games that I found myself having a lot of trouble with because the controls are freaking awful in this game. There were so many instances where I felt like my character was controlling themselves and I wasn't in control of what was going on, which ruined a lot of the game's really cool, fantastic and epic moments. And this happened constantly throughout the damn game and it really, really took some of the enjoyment out of it. And for that reason, I'm putting it in pretty damn good. Now the next game is also a sequel to a game that is in this tier list already, and that game is Spider-Man Miles Morales. I freaking loved this game, it was more Spider-Man, it was fantastic, the story was pretty damn good, and yeah, I thought that once again it was a total package, so boom, masterpiece. Keep 
your eyes peeled for part two coming soon. Let me know what you think about these tier list videos. Let me know if there's any tier lists you would like to see in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Pip pip toodaloo!